Alexander, and I'm here with none other than if we weren't in the same classroom in school or running the halls of Coleman and Young or playing against each other, Cooley versus Renaissance, <laughs> some kind of way <laughs> we can our, our, our paths intertwine. So none other than Carl Braggs, founder of nonprofit Daddy Disciples. Right. So um first question my brother is where did the idea come about? <clears throat> well, Daddy Disciples started with, uh, you know, I've been coaching for quite some time. Uh, little League football, Little League basketball, high school football. I got a chance to go back and coach over at Renaissance for a few years. So, we're sitting around and uh, we're coaching, we're dealing with kids, we're working with them, we're doing these things. But along the lines, we, we, we feel like there's so much that's being missed. We focus on so much on sports, we focus on so much on trying to put out the next professional athlete, the next LeBron James, the next Kobe Bryant, the next whoever, and we dropping the ball on every other department. So we come together and not only that, the one thing that stuck out the most to me as I was coaching was the, the, the amount of involvement from the fathers. You know, we ended up dealing with more mothers than fathers. So. That stuck out to me as well. So the idea behind Daddy Disciples was, it was a few ideas behind it. The idea originally came from one or two to build some character skill building courses for like our young boys, teaching them the small things. Like when we played ball back in the were kids, you learn how to be a man. Right? You, know, you learn how to look a man in his face when you talk to him. You learn how to shake hands. You learn game days. We throw on shirt and tie. We, you know, certain things we did that we didn't look at like it was a big deal. But now that we're older and we're men now, we understand that a lot of those small things became big things later, and that's been missing. And then partly, the second part of it was, was about establishing a platform to empower black fathers, to empower fatherhood, to, 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 to motivate more fathers that want to be more involved, to, to make fatherhood trend, so to speak. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, so yeah, that's where it came from. So it's Daddies, which is an acronym for Developing Attitudes, Determination, and Discipline in Our Youth. Uh, it's founded on, on seven core principles, three of them of which are in the name uh, uh, discipline. Without it, you're going nowhere. You know, you can be as talented as you want to be, you can be as fast, as strong, as smart, quick, whatever, efficient. But if you're not disciplined and you're not, and you're not steadfast about pursuing your craft, whatever that may be, and sticking with it in hell or high water, you're not going far. So that's one of the most important principles. You got attitude. Uh, we want to get young men, young women to, to be able to understand that the attitude affects everything. You know, remember we uh, one of our favorite movies when we was kids, uh, remember the Titans? Attitude. Attitude like reflects leadership. leadership. So, when, you, when you approach things from a positive standpoint, with a positive attitude, positive energy, going into it feeling like we're going to be the best we can be every time. So whether it's in the classroom, we want to be the best we can be. Whether it's on the football field, the basketball court, we want to be the best we can be. When we at home, we want to be the best we can be. At all times, we want to be the best we can be. So in order to do that, we must approach everything with a positive attitude. Um, the next, determination. Determination and discipline go hand in hand. Um, just because, I mean, to be, to be disciplined, you probably are determined. Yes. Um, but just because in private you're determined, you probably are disciplined. Right. right. So it go hand in hand. But it's basically just about being able to get through the obstacles, get, get through the hard stuff. But no matter what path you go on, it's not going to be easy. Right. Something's gonna happen that's gonna test your will. Something's gonna happen that's gonna test how bad you want something. And that's one of the major things that we took from playing football. You know, playing in them, practicing in them, them two a days, hot right. summers, them 90 degree days, yell day, making mistakes. You want to be out hanging. You want to be doing all kind of other things except for bear crawling in the sun. But it tests your will. And if you was determined, you got to do it. A lot of people quit, but the ones that got through it. It's a certain mental strength that come behind getting through something that you don't think the same insurmountable. Right. Like so um, knowledge is self worth. You know, I go to classrooms, I speak to kids, I spoke to classrooms with kids and, and ask them questions like, Who are you? Right. They look at you with this blank look like I'm Tayshaun, or, or, I'm, or I'm Roderick, or I'm whoever. No, I didn't ask what your name was. I said, who are you? Right. I'm a basketball player. I'm, I'm, I am ask you what you'd like to do. I right. said, who are you? Who are you? And you get dead silent. Like, y'all don't even know who y'all are. Y'all don't know what y'all come from. Right. See, when we was coming up, we went to Carmel Young Elementary. Right. 
it was affirmations and things all around us. Walking into that school, we knew what we were. Like, uh, I was over at uh, Dawson Elementary last week, um, talking, so I was speaking with a principal over there I know. And uh, he's, 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 he's coming with an old school approach where he's got murals of like Barack Obama and uh, Frederick Douglass and people like this. And see, when I saw it, it took me back because it was like, I hadn't seen that yeah. in a while. You yeah, know, we wanted to call me young. We, we did grow up with that. You got, you got, you got pictures. Of, we, we grew up walking the hallways, paintings of Shaka Zulu, yeah, and Malcolm X, and, and, and Harriet Tubman, and Sojourner Truth. We knew who Nat Turner was growing up. That's right. Our people just getting hit, but we knew. And people don't understand how powerful that is on the subconscious. Because when we talk about uh, reality being perception and controlling minds through media, okay. when all you see is and all you hear is negativity. You right. hear black folks saying, kill each other, do how, shoot this person. This is what you have to do to be cool. This is what you have to do to be accepted. Right. Perce reality and perception, rea perception creates reality. Exactly. But reality don't have to be the truth. It don't have to be, exactly. See, people get it confused. Reality and the truth is not necessarily the same thing. Yeah. When you watch a TV and you see something constantly, right. and you listen to the radio and you hear something constantly, it becomes perception and that's perception becomes reality. It don't have to be the truth. It don't have to be. It's so, embedded in so kind. Case in point, you yeah. got a rapper. Right. All he rapping about is getting hot, right. shooting, gang right. robbing, right. all Stealing of these things. Girl, and he's right. making it look like this is what's up. Right. So a young kid that's growing up without the presence of mind of knowing that look, this is fake. Mm -hmm. This is entertainment. Right. It becomes their reality. So when you talk about uh, kids being able to see positive images of themselves on media, right. and being able to walk into school and see positive images right. of themselves on walls, mm -hmm. it paints a picture subconsciously and it makes them feel empowered right. without them even realizing it. That's right. Exactly. So when we talk about knowledge of self-worth, we have to put more affirmations out there and more images of us being strong, or us being positive, us showing that you can be cool without talking to them. You can be cool without some of that. You can be cool without scamming or ripping people off or robbing or whatever else. You can be cool just being a man. Totally. And that, sometimes I, I go through that and it's like, how how is the, the quest for knowledge not cool? You know what I'm saying? I, I don't. It, it's hard to fathom really, but you I mean, know, you look, I guess you look, it's that come with it. You look what happens though. Like even at, even I call me young. I, I gotta keep revisiting that because y'all yeah, got sure. roots. Right, right. We had a chess club. I was on a chess club. Right. Learn how to play chess at a young age. And you don't have these things in the school no more. Mm -hmm. I go over and I talk about this. We base in our program, we're trying to develop a, a financial literacy curriculum. Right. I go to a school, I talk about it. When you talk about it with people in the schools, they cringe up like right. They don't want that thing. Exactly. The powers that be don't want that thing. Mm -hmm. And it's a reason why when we grew up, we never had a class that taught us how to budget checkbooks. Right. Taught us about how to re re not rebuild, I mean not repair, but how to build credit. Exactly, build credit. To heck with so we don't have rebuild to rebuild and yeah. repair, no, how to build it from junk. Exactly. Um, we didn't talk about real estate investing, we didn't talk about leveraging funds and things of these natures. Right. That's the reason why, because they want to program you to work, 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 work. We want right. to create robots, we want to yeah. create employees. We don't want to create want people to build them Fours and Wranglers out there. Yeah, you don't want people to think outside the box, but when people start thinking, mm -hmm. now it's affecting our bottom line. It's yeah. affecting our profits. Money, right. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, uh, leadership. Right. Talk about leadership. Um, we don't have enough people that are willing to be there. Being a leader is dangerous. Dangerous. Especially in these days and times, mm -hmm. but we still need them. That's, That's right. another core principle. Uh, health. You gotta take care of yourself. You, know, you gotta, you gotta, um, you gotta make sure. You know, we dying from drones, from cancer, from kidney failure. You know, we be dying like every day, and it's, it's what we eat. It's, it's, and quiet is kept. The way you feel physically is the way you gonna probably feel mentally. You know, it's, all the time. You gotta, you gotta get the young boys to understand. This is the reason why, you know, Michelle and them, Obama and them went on that campaign about, you know lowering the obesity rate and getting right. in the schools. Cause they taking all that stuff out the schools with physical right. education. Like, it's crazy. And it's like, it's done on purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, to we make you kind of obsolete to society. You know, you, know you, you don't have no, you like to take your music out, so you don't have that. You don't have your like creativity. Yeah, you don't have your health classes. You don't have, I mean, these, these things are vital to our community. So, um, 
kudos to you for bringing it back. Trying. And, and you know, Daddy's Disciple, it, it, it is a non-profit. We're, we're working towards getting our 501c3, but we're recognized by the state of Michigan as a non-profit. So we're working towards the 501c3. Okay. And we should have that thing done by the end of the year. We should, we should, we should have our paperwork and everything submitted by the end of this month coming up in okay. September. And then uh, we should be, depending on how long it takes the IRS to get back to us, we, right. should, we should be going forward with it. And it should be coming back by, uh, hopefully, they say it takes up to six months. Right, I've heard that. But I'm hoping that it won't. Right. But uh, regardless of the fact of how long it comes, we're still going to be working towards doing what we're doing. We're going to still be working towards reaching out to schools and reaching out, trying to develop programs and just continuing to just keep the ball rolling and keep the energy going. Like I said, um, got a lot of good ideas, but it's about getting the right people in place. It's about the right prop. It's about the proper network, and it's about. At the end of the day, one man and one person can't do it all, so it's about finding like-minded individuals that's right. committed to change mm -hmm. and, you know, working with it like that. See, me, it's so many things that we need to touch on. There's so many things that need to be, need to be attended to. Right. But uh, we, we, we boiled it down to financial literacy because at the end of the day, like I said, if I got, I got three children, two of which I live in the house with me. Um, I would consider myself a failure as a parent if I didn't raise my kids to understand economics right, and psychology. Right. This is how we are controlled. Right. They understand how certain of things will happen and how it will affect us. Like if, you, if you're familiar with the Willie Lynch letters, yes. it is prophecy. Mm -hmm. So another part of those disciples, the biggest, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say the biggest part, but the thing that I notice the most is the gap between the young and the old. And if you say, you read what he just says, it's all about putting the old man against the against the young man. So you hear older dudes all the time, and they stand these young boys. Yeah, like, young punk, yeah, yeah or whatever. Yeah. Then you got the young boys that don't trust or respect the older cats. You want to know why? Because you older cats, y'all didn't give us what we needed. And y'all mad at us. Uh, mad at them or us or whatever, however you want to say it, because they don't respect you because y'all was absent. Y'all was running around in the street, y'all was selling dope, y'all was partying, y'all was hanging, y'all was making a bunch of babies with women y'all didn't love. The, the, the black, the nuclear family got totally disassembled in the black community, and it's not their fault. It was, it was a systematic thing, but at the same time, it, it, it created that gap. A lot of dudes we come up with in our generation don't even know their fathers. Fathers been locked up, doing life sentences. Uh, guys been got murdered, all kind of stuff. So you got a situation where the young don't trust the old, the old don't trust the young. Right. And that's a problem. Yes. Because we have to bridge that. We have to bridge the gap. Right. Because it's, I go around as many of the old folks as I can. You know, because you know the, 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 uh, the, the, the people. Time is catching up. We about to be older. We about right. to be elders. Exactly. Right. I can't let my wife's seventy-five year old grandfather leave this earth without picking his brain every chance I get. That's right. It's only right. You know, I can't yeah. let any time, any opportunity I get when I'm at the gym, I could be anywhere. Right. I see a man with that gray. Yeah. And with that wisdom in his face, I'm picking his brain. That's right. I'm, I want to know how'd you make fifty years of marriage work? I'm telling you. I want to know. Uh, what you believe in. I want to know what you've seen. I want to know your perspective of things. Because to, to let some, to let that generation pass without giving up the wisdom, giving up the education and the knowledge that they picked up in the 70, 80 years they've been here, they might as well say they wasted their lives. Right, exactly. That's the thing. Is, what's knowledge if, if you're not sharing? You exactly. I mean? So I'm totally with you on that. What what kinds of, um, I know you kind of spoke on it, but what, what kinds of like services and or programs does that cycle? Well, right now, like I said, we came out um, in the summer, we came out like earlier this year. So we had the Father's Day event, we came out, we're going to do that every single year. We were scheduling, we were going to put together a back to school camp, but some things got twisted up and we didn't get a chance to do that. We're trying to, like I said, we're developing a financial education program right now. So I'm trying to present it to some schools and get inside some schools. Yeah. And then a little, you know, a little push back on that. So I'm thinking about going in the direction of maybe possibly just getting a location right. and hosting something like that monthly, of course, yeah. you know, because it's like I said, I'm getting a little resistance from the schools as far as getting where, in there. Where do you think that's coming from? Uh, you know where it's coming from. Right, right. I don't know. <laughs> you know where it's coming from. They don't yeah, listen. Yeah. People not ready 
for what's about to take place in this country. Man. At the end of the day, if you can read the writing on the wall and you can see like, and, and, this, and this media is so deep because mm -hmm. all of the information is available. Right. You know, they say you want to hire something black man, put it in the book. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not on the book no more, it's on, it's on their phone. Exactly. It's, in, it's on their computer. Mm -hmm. So they can see these things and it's, it's the energy going on around the country where it's like, people are starting to wake up. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's not so much people starting to wake up. I think people been woke. Right. Yeah. But our generation, you know, our generation is like, right. all right, enough of this. Exactly. And it's without the fear. See, I got the, uh, the funny meme out there where it's, it's the young black dude like, I am my grandma. I will, you know, yeah, it's, right. it's, it's, it's a removal of fear because we far removed from that. So we don't have that. It's in our subconscious, but it's like your grandmother and your grandfather have yeah. seen it up close and personal. We kind of been sheltered from it. So like when you see all the stuff going on with the police, shooting people down and things and whatnot, it seems new to us. Right. It's been going on. It's been going on. It just wasn't recorded. It just wasn't being recorded. Exactly. So it's a um and I, and I and I say this all the time and I really mean this. If it's gonna be a resurgence, if it's gonna be a revolt, whatever it's gonna be, right, it's gonna start here. Yes. Detroit is the most heavily populated African American city in the country. Mm -hmm. Like, tell what you see downtown. Yeah, right, right. That's Don't make a mistake that. about it. Mm -hmm. Detroit is 87% black. It's the black mm -hmm. Mecca. You know, there's yeah. going to ever be a place where it's going to be an uproar. And people got to know their history where they're at. Yes. Detroit yeah. has a rich history. Mm -hmm. they, you know, so, like I said, it's, it's very important. And it's another thing, too, not to get off topic, but it's another thing, too, for us not to get so hell bent on feeling like we're going to see everything we want to see in our lifetime. Yeah, right. We're planning to see. Planning right to now. see. That's you know right. what I mean? Exactly. And at the end of the day, we can't get so caught up on who not with it. We got to be more focused on who is with it. At the end of the day, it's always going to be people from our from our hue and from our cloth that aren't a part of it. That's you right. know, Harriet Tubman say she would have saved way more slaves if all of them wanted to go. Yeah, exactly. Some of them didn't want to go. Some of them was like, some of them was like, oh yeah, we, we living good over here. Right. Wall Street, that's good. Hey. So y'all go ahead. So it's gonna be the same way now. Right. You know, we're not gonna kill the crab in the bucket mentality overnight. Exactly. The stuff that the damages that we have as people, as fathers, as men, as women, as wives, as children, the, the, the struggles that we have and the, the psychological damage that we have has been implemented for over hundreds of years. It's not gonna go away tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a process. It's a process. Even the conscious people still suffer from some of these sicknesses. Exactly. You know, so some of the smartest guys, you, see, you look at Dr. Umar and Brother Polite, right. super conscious. But y'all still kind of got that crab in the bucket yeah, mentality you because y'all steadily competing with each other, trying to expose each other. Right. Come on, it's like, we don't got to agree on everything. Our end game is the same. We should be able to come together for common cause. Right. So, I mean, hey, it's not going to happen overnight, but... Continue to continue to awaken yourself, but most importantly, continue to awaken your kids. Exactly. They understand it starts at home. the power in the youth. They understand it's, it just trip us out. Like they start third grade music school, they do penitentiaries. Because they figure if you can't pass a standardized test in third grade, you're not gonna be able to be employable. You don't have to go out here. It's, it's all it's, it's nature. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a system. It's a system. They know that you're not gonna be able to put food on the table, but they know it's your animal instinct and your instinct as a man to want to do that. So if you don't have education, right. you can't get a job, you've been in trouble since you was 13, in and out of juveniles with a felony, you can't go out here in the real world and make a living. Right. What you gonna do? By any means necessary. Survival of the food. You're gonna get out here and take from people, mm -hmm. you're gonna kill for it, you're gonna steal for it, but right. you're just pursuing your instincts. Your instincts say hunt. That's right. Exactly.